Hey guys, Fox will be with another article video. As the name suggests, this was originally an article that I wrote over on Cloth5. However, I figured that the topic was interesting enough for me to turn it into a video. If you want to read the article itself, then the link will be in the description. And also, if you want to see when I write articles in the future, I suggest you follow my Facebook and my Twitter pages, and those links will also be in the description. So, with that out of the way, today I wanted to talk about the difference between not deserving to lose a game and actually deserving to win. With the role of an educator, I'm often asked questions about how individuals can improve their skill in League of Legends. The questions range from being rather simple, things like what rune should I run on League Jungle, to fairly complicated, like when's the best time to gank bot lane, to the pretty much impossible to answer and basically just rants disguised as questions, things like what do I do when my top goes 0-5 every single game. As you can imagine, the whole ELO hell topic is one that I deal with fairly frequently. Because of this, I've dedicated a fair few videos to helping those in a self-perceived ELO hell, and I imagine I'll continue to do so until the concept ceases to exist. In other words, I'll be doing it forever. I'll be honest, I'm critical of those that claim to be stuck in ELO hell. I don't believe it exists, at least not with the definition that many claim, and I hold that it can be overcome by improving as a player. The Dunning-Kruger effect explains ELO Hell quite comfortably with the vicious cycle it creates. You can't climb leagues, but you believe you're good enough, so you get frustrated, so you don't improve, so you don't climb, but you believe you're good enough, and rinse and repeat. A lot of the ELO Hell problems come down to perspective, mindset, and attitude. Now these three things will determine whether or not you improve as a player when you play this game, and, by extension, whether or not you get stuck in this ELO hell. The mindset I want to talk about here is, as I mentioned previously, the difference between not deserving to lose and deserving to win. Whether it's in the post-game lobby, a comment on YouTube, or a message I get sent, the words I don't deserve to lose are more prevalent than grains of sand in the Sahara. This attitude is not right, in fact it is a direct contributing factor to an individual's placement in their ELO hell. There are several reasons why I say this and why saying I don't deserve to lose is not a legitimate cop-out for when you lose a game. Firstly, it is completely and utterly the wrong perspective to be looking from. At the end of a game, you shouldn't be asking yourself if you deserve to lose, you should be asking yourself if you deserve to win. Some of you reading this may be feeling a bit perplexed. Surely that's the same thing. If you don't lose, you win. If you win, you don't lose. Like, what is this guy on about? Now, I'm of the opinion that it's simply not enough to go even in lane, unless you're like a horrid laner or something who'll carry late game, but it's not enough to simply not feed. It's not enough to just not get caught. You have to be dominating people. You have to be catching people out. You have to be making plays. You can't just be a neutral factor in your games. You have to be a positive one. Secondly, the phrase, I don't deserve to lose, paints yourself as a victim. It reeks of helplessness that the outcome of the game was decided from other people's actions as opposed to your own. Seeing as other people are, more or less, outside of your control, if their actions cause you to lose, then there's nothing you could have done, right? Victimising yourself is the easiest way to stay in ELO hell, because you'll be chalking up all of your losses to external factors as opposed to yourself. By saying, did I deserve to win, you're putting the focus back on yourself and your own actions. The outcome of the game resides in what you do, not what your teammates do. Lastly, and this is somewhat intertwined with the previous point, your self-improvement is hindered when you excuse the outcome of the game on external factors. If you say you didn't deserve to lose, then that means that you would have won if it weren't for your bad allies, which implies that you yourself did nothing or very little wrong. By instead asking what it was that you could have done to win, you open yourself up to criticism and can focus on improving elements that will enable you to do that in the future. Did you farm as well as you could? Did you deny the enemy enough? Should you have roamed more instead of just stomping your own lane? Did you play fights correctly? Could you have made better calls to organise your team into making plays? Etc, etc. Now this next part might get a little bit confusing, but I feel like it's worth saying. It's like there are two kind of mistakes in this game. There are the obvious standard mistakes, such as missing a CS or dying in lane, and then there are retrospect mistakes or missed opportunities. Things you could have or should have done that you chose not to. Things that would have been beneficial to your team. It's very easy to miss these kind of mistakes because, well, they don't really exist as such. I think the majority of people who believe they're in ELO hell fail to recognise these missed opportunities, which leads them to not comprehend why they're losing games. Now, my opinions of solo queue, as previously mentioned, are fairly black and white, and people argue that it's unfair to be expected to dominate games just to win. 
So if some closing words, I'd like to address that. Playing average doesn't mean that you deserve to lose, but it also doesn't mean that you deserve to win either. People argue that it's not fair that there are feeders on their team in every game. To that I say that if the enemy team doesn't have feeders, then you're not dominating enough. By playing well and punishing enemies, you will cause them to feed. Most feeders aren't born, they're created, created by strong opponents. Be one of those opponents and you'll create enough positive to outweigh the negative on your team. It is impossible to win every game, but with a shift in attitude, you will open yourself up to being a much better player. There will be games where you don't deserve to lose, where you will win. That's all well and good, but don't be blindly content with your play just because you won. Mediocrity and not being a negative influence on your team isn't exactly a recipe for disaster, but it's not going to push you through to the next tiers either. So that's all I really want to say on this, guys. If you did like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and also you can leave your thoughts in the comments below. If this was the kind of video that you enjoyed watching, then you can also subscribe to me, and if you want to see me go streaming, then go follow my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash foxtrop. But thanks very much for watching this video, guys, and I will see you in my next video.